I'm David Allen, and I'm talking with Marie, uh, Dr. Marie Allen Carroll, and we're talking about what it means to break out from your pain, break out from your codependency, break out from the things that hold you back, break out from your limitations. As I move around our country right now, many of us are so burdened by what's happening. I fear that we're all growing inward, as it were, and in some sense, losing our potential. If you don't break out from your limitation, how can our country be blessed? You can't leave it to just politicians or ministers of religion or what have you. You have to make a decision. Become the best person you can be. And to do that, you have to break out or grow beyond your limitations to move to your potential. In the last segment, uh, Marie talked about the importance of, first of all, you need an awareness that there's more to you than you realize. And that's true. There's much more to you than you realize. And secondly, when you realize that, you have to confront what's holding you back. Confront your pain. Confront that person who's abusing you. Confront your financial situation. Confront your fear about yourself. Confront that maybe your early background you felt really cheated and hurt. But only in confronting that, you'll be able to conquer all that. Absolutely. Absolutely. It made me think about when you said confronting uh, fear, con confronting finances, and you just even think about how many of us, you know, bills come in and you just kind of push it away, you don't want to look into the envelope. That's a simple example, but that's what it's about. That's why I say we take confrontation, I, I don't judge anyone for it because it is so difficult. Sometimes just the act of looking in a mirror, there's been so many clients that I ask, how do they feel when they look in a mirror? And there's been times people's eyes well up, they can't make eye contact with themselves in the mirror, they feel so, t so terrible. Mirrors really represent something. When you're by yourself and you're looking in the mirror and you're in a situation where you feel life has just become so different than you expected. Mm -hmm. Looking in the mirror is almost this, this feeling of complete vulnerability and, and having to acknowledge to yourself that either you've, you feel like you've screwed up or life has screwed you and you don't know what to do. So confrontation, that ability to look inward and say, oh my gosh, this is not, this is not what I want to do. You know, mm -hmm. especially in a society that through social media and what have you, everyone's saying, you know, life is amazing, life is great, I'm doing so well, I'm so blessed, especially in our country. Um, it takes a lot of courage to say, you know what, life's not that great right now. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for some of the things, but there's other things that I really need to, to, to have some help with. On the other hand, Marie, when a person does confront this situation, they start to see glimmers of light they didn't see before. For example, in my office, I always keep flowers. And uh, it's not uncommon for a person to say, oh, those flowers are beautiful. Well, in actual fact, they've been there for quite a while. I have particularly one special vase, which is multicolored. And I'm amazed how people sometimes wake up after being in the office for almost six months and say, oh, that's a beautiful vase. But the vase was there all the time. But somehow it's like shade, a shade was over their eyes. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's you and you're listening tonight. Maybe what about confronting your situation? Maybe but what about dreaming of becoming what you really want to be or what you could be? What about being who you really are and not a carbon copy of somebody else? That's a challenge, but you know, that's what life's all about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, so maybe it'd be helpful to give a couple of ways to start making that happen. Um, you're, you're aware of the situation. You are confronting that something needs to be done. Um, one, of the thing, one of the ways you can start seeing patterns in your life of where you might be uh, faltering is, is journaling. You know, getting up in the morning when it's quiet and start writing your feelings, start writing what's going on. It's amazing the things that start coming out. Um, another key part is detachment. Detachment is tricky. Some people think that detachment means that you're going to become this cold robot type person. It's not that. When you're in the process of confrontation, awareness, confrontation, and then committing to change, you are going to need to, to, to grow some of your own boundaries. You're going to almost, it's almost like you've had, um, your, your boundaries, your walls have become, uh, so permeated, you just don't know where you begin and the situation ends, whether, it, whether it's your job, whether it's a relationship, whether it's your child, whether it's an addiction. You just, you, you no longer have your sense of self. So part of the process is detachment, which means you might still love the person, 
but you are not going to allow your emotions to be dictated by that person's action, by dictated by what's happening on your job, dictated by your addiction. So it's not about not loving, it's about self-protection, trying not to get as emotional about the situation, looking back, looking a little bit, almost like, um, it sounds kind of weird, but almost like floating out of yourself, you're a witness to your own life, and, and taking that step back and saying, okay, what, what is going on here? Um, and so just trying to get some of the emotional detachment so you're able to focus on uh, the practical plan in place. And again, that's where a family group or therapy or what have you can really help you strengthen some of those boundaries because you've talked about before, um, the tendency is we, we split sometimes, which means when we love someone, we want that person to do so well that sometimes we give our best to that person, um, our adequacy to that person, and don't leave enough for ourselves. Hmm. So we all have adequacy and inadequacy parts, but sometimes when you are more of a people pleaser or a codependent person or you're trying to just make everything perfect all the time, we tend to give our adequacy and so we're just left with our inadequacy. So part of detaching is to say, you know what? I love you, but I need my adequacy back. Mm. And some people aren't going to like that. Mm. <laughs> some people yeah. aren't going to like that. Uh, an another way of putting it is we give our power away. Yes, that's right. You know, we all have an authority card given by Almighty God. And when we give that away to somebody, we're giving our adequacy, but we're giving our power. And to grow into the person you want to be or to move to your potential, you have to take your power back to use your power to develop yourself and then you can share your power with others but if you give other people your power then you're dispowered as it were and really you're just codependent or a pleaser of them and then you can't even dream of your potential and you become totally addicted to your limitations mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely and, the, and the, the ironic part is you think you're doing it to help everyone because you're such a good person but a lot of times you're enabling other people's behavior and it's just making the situation even worse. So we have to be very careful when we get into that, um, I'm so helpful that you're really not trying to be a martyr or a hero uh, because you think you're so good at helping everyone, but in so doing you're, you're really destroying yourself and your life and people around you. So detachment is key. Detachment is a really important part of the process. Again, it doesn't mean you're cold. It doesn't mean you don't love someone or something. Um, it just means you are, you are working on getting your boundaries back in place, which is, which is really important. So between journaling, detachment, um, obviously some kind of therapy or family group, these are all ways to start getting a little bit of your voice back. And it's so beautiful to see when you see someone starting to put this in place, they, the healing is starting to begin. The healing is starting to begin. And the relief that there can be another option. One thing I'd like to bring up, though, is um, what I'm seeing more of is sometimes people are surprised when someone is out of a situation. You know, they've broken free. They've made a big change in their life. They're doing better. The addiction's gone or the negative relationship or whatever it is. Um, a year, four years later, but the person still seems to be having a lot of symptoms of anxiety or they're having a difficulty forming new relationships or they're having nightmares, or um, they're being triggered with anger very easily. What that is about is, is basically post-traumatic stress. You know, and we're not gonna go into the huge diagnosis of it, but we're seeing more and more of that in the country and the world at large. We've, we've been so traumatized, either directly or indirectly, that we're almost existing on this heightened level of sens sensitivity of anxiety, and so little things happen that trigger this feeling of anger or panic, whereas normally before the trauma or before the difficult situation we're in, we, we would never have been triggered that way. Mm -hmm. So I'm really learning that it is a process and the PTSD part is important. Um, what you'll see is someone out of abuse of a relationship, the worst is over, right? The worst is over. Maybe she's not being beaten every night and, and, and these horrible things, the stories are just unbelievable. Um, but as she talks about it, she, even though it's been years out, she still has so much pain in her voice because now that, the, now that the actual moment of having to survive, how can I live through this beating so this person doesn't kill me, 
now that they're out, it's almost like they're able to think about and remember all the other stuff that they had pushed down. The other things that were really controlling um, speeding in a car really fast with you in the passenger seat and not being able to get out or uh, finding out that the person had spent the money that you were supposed to buy a house with on some other ridiculous thing or what have you. So you'll see the person start talking about these other things that are mind-blowing in and of themselves, but because they were in such a place of just needing to survive, their, their psyche hadn't even really identified it. Mm. So part of this is if, if it's you or, or anyone, if you, even if you've gotten out of the situation, you find yourself still wondering why, why it's hard to trust or why, why are you still getting so angry or why are you getting depressed or why is it it's still difficult sleeping? It's because, it's because, just you're, cause, because you're out of the situation doesn't mean you've completely gone in over the trauma. Mm. And you've spoken a lot about how physically, and we know even every single cell in our body remembers trauma. Mm. It's important to know that even though your mind may be away from the trauma, Marie, the body keeps score. Mm -hmm. And we forget that, that our body keeps score of the trauma we experience. And that's why it's so important in a relationship. If you're being traumatized either verbally or uh, physically, your body does keep score. So your mind may be free or repressing the trauma, but remember it still affects your body. And that's why you can have many types of physical illnesses, whether it be back pain, stomach pains, or heart attacks, or strokes, Cancer. or what have you. Mm -hmm. But our, our body does keep score. And that's why the whole movement now is to work with our mind, the soul, and body. Right, mm -hmm. right, absolutely. And that's, um, so again, just trying to, trying to give you a, a little sense that uh, if you are still experiencing things after a trauma, that that's normal. If you are uh, stuck in a situation where you feel like fear or doubt is keeping you in there, that is, I think that is the number one reason why people stay. They're so scared of what's gonna be on the other side. Um, I think doubt, they've said, is the number one killer of growth, mm -hmm. far and away. Whether it's taking a new step in your career, whether it's learning something new, whether it's trying to find your potential and purpose, it's, you want to so badly, but those little nagging feelings of self-doubt, like, what if I can't do it? What if I'm not gonna be good enough? What if I'm gonna be embarrassed, humiliated, rejected, or abandoned? Um, mm -hmm. Oftentimes, sadly, you have people that are very close to you mm -hmm. that are very good at putting doubt on your dreams. So being aware that, um, that doubt and fear can really dictate how far you grow. And if you give in to the doubt, you're never going to, you're never going to fulfill your potential. Yet, Marie, um, doubt is a scary thing mm -hmm. because once a person has doubts about themselves yeah. and fears about themselves, they tend to believe the lie, yes. like, I am no good, no one wants me, I am not worthy, you know, I'm a failure. Mm -hmm. And these lies often play through our full self. Yes. And once you give credence to those, it's really hard to move, right. move along to break through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think one of the most touching things or um, difficult things is you see a grown-up who is successful in a lot of their areas of life, but whether it's in a job or whether it's in a relationship or what have you, they just can't seem to move forward. And a lot of times if you take the time to find out their story, it's because somewhere in their childhood they were told they weren't good enough mm -hmm. or they would never succeed or they were stupid. And it's amazing how those tapes, even if the person seems so successful on the outside, still play in their minds and it's mm. it, they get into a scary situation or an anxious situation and that voice of you're stupid you're no good you'll never make it just come roaring back and it just that that mm. doubt and that um, fear just takes a hold and a lot of times the person won't move forward because it's so paralyzing and that's where we talk about self-sabotage you know you start believing the lies so much that you, you give in to them and that I think is one of the the saddest feelings. There's an amazing, um, there's an interesting study by Martin Seligman that they did with um, dogs, or sorry, Thorndike. They did with dogs and they put uh, a dog, a set of dogs in a cage um, and they set electric shock. And even though there was a lever to open the cage, the dogs couldn't get out and they just had to sit there and endure the shock. Now they took another set of dogs and they put them in the cage and they administered electric shock. Now this cage, 
when you push the lever, the dogs could get out, right? So they were able to escape the shock. So then they took the first set of dogs again who had, who had not been able to escape the shock. And this time they took those dogs and they put them in the cage where when the shock came, you could push the lever and get out. The dogs were put in there, they got the shock, and what did they do? They wouldn't push the lever because they had, they had learned that when you get pain, there's no way out. Mm -hmm. They had learned that there's no point in even trying. It's called learned helplessness. Mm -hmm. And that's a really big part going on in our, in our country, in our society, where we've been hurt so much, we just we don't believe that goodness is going gonna, is gonna to come. That, that's so important, to learn to helplessness, um, fellow Bahamians, that we actually can learn failure. We can learn that we can't grow. We can learn that we can't get out of this destructive relationship. We can learn that we cannot get out of this destructive job. No, that's wrong. You're empowered. You have meaning, dignity, identity, and value. You can decide with awareness and confrontation and a desire to move. We're going to take a break and be right back.